Straight to the assign line next. Camera two, can I have camera two next, please? Stand by on OS7. Coming to assign two. Can I have the OS for the studio, please? OK, everything's sounding good. Mixing to camera three. And presenters, presenters ready, please. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2. Cut, go bam, cue. We are Catherine and Louisa, and welcome to BBC News School Report from St. Ben Viscoff High School. Coming up, the Olympics is coming to Northumberland. We go out and about to all of our partnership schools to recreate the route at the famous torture will undergo this summer and see the makings of a song written about the Olympics by a talented student. Also today, on the spot, we go behind the scenes of our very own question time as the county's top politicians, alongside our very own debate team, are grilled by locals in Bedlington. We'll also have the latest sport news with special reports from Newcastle United and the Newcastle Falcons, a trip back to the 60s with a review of our school's production of Greece the Musical and a look at North East Culture and Art. All in the next 15 minutes here on BBC News School Report. A horrible coach crash killed 22 children and 6 adults when it crashed into a concrete wall in the Swiss Alps Tunnel on Tuesday night. The coach was bringing home a school party from their skiing holiday Investigators ruled out the possibility of the driver falling asleep or speeding. Both the driver and the relief driver were killed, and a motorist identified the scene in the two-mile tunnel. There was only one survivor, a 12-year-old girl, who broke both her legs. Greg's is going to expand its business nationwide. It expects to create around 800 jobs in the next year. The Newcastle-based company reported record sales of £701 million in 2011. Five-year-old Reed Carter has decided it's time for his first haircut after being mistaken for a girl for the past five years. Reed is raising money for Sunderland Children's Hospital. So far, £82 has been raised. Barbers are under strict instruction from his mum about cutting his hair. It's an event that takes place every four years, but this year it's London's turn to host the Olympics. The rabbit said to London, but we're hundreds of miles away. Will you be right? But Northumberland has its part to play in the games this summer. The Olympic torch will be passing through Annick, Ashington, Morpeth, Bedlington, Blythe, and just south of Cranbourne during the summer. And we have got schools in each of these areas to join in. So we made our own torch and went out and about to bring the Olympics to Northumberland early. and Annick waiting for the Olympic torch to come from St Paul's First School. Wait, here it comes! My name is Andrew and I'm here at St Benedict's National. I've got some exciting news, the Olympic torch is on its way. In fact, I can see it coming now. The Olympic torch is now on its way to St Aidan's first school as well, National. 
My name is Andrew Thornton, BBC News, Hillary Cross. Hello, I'm here at St. Robert's First School in Morpeth and here comes here and the torch! Joseph, and I come from a school called St. Pete. It's in Bedlington. We're waiting for the Olympic torch. Oh, look, there it is. My name is Abby and I'm here at St. Andrew's Primary School in Dry and here I come to the Olympic Tour. songs and we don't use other songs that have been in the charts, we just make our own. And what made you join? We play instruments and we thought why don't, why don't, why not give it a try? So we came and we really enjoyed it. How would you feel if the Olympics used this song to represent your song? Happy. It would be nice, it would be cool. Yeah, that would be nice. Can we also, oh, it would be like, more privileged because this is a small group and the Olympics is like a worldwide thing and so yeah it would be really good to have us representing Northumberland. <laughs> This group was set up for kids who love writing music and not necessarily, they're not necessarily performers. So it's really nice that we're able to have an opportunity to record in some way one of our songs. We've written probably four or five songs now and we generally write them and then we just move on to the next one and whatever ideas that people come up with 
Um, so it's really nice to have the opportunity to um, showcase what they do because they're terrific. Question Time is one of the BBC's most successful programmes. It brings together politicians and big decision makers and puts them in front of an audience of local people, businesses and communities. So we thought we'd do the same for Northumberland. We sent our reporters behind the scenes to find out more. to question time. Uh, we need to be more creative. We need uh, uh, people, companies to be incentivized to come and locate in this area because we've got some fantastic people in this area. People want to work. People want to be educated. They want to go to college and, and, and Alan mentioned 50 50 Some want to go to, to the university. It's about whether schools should educate you for exams and, and also no. educate you for life. And I think this is one of the things, again, that we need to get a, a grip on in this country because part of a school's responsibility is to be part of the community and in a sense yes making well-rounded individuals who then go out into that community and interact with parents grandparents the whole wider community is involved in that for the world it is a com you know life is a competition you know if we're trying to even it out too much we'll fail we've got to try and keep competitive we've got to try and turn out people who can actually fill the jobs that are there. Can I come it? No, it's, it's really important actually they all do sport. That they're not behind a desk, lesson after lesson, that they get a, a real variety, not just in the curriculum, but also the way that they're, they're learning. So some of our most able students will do drama that develops confidence and so on and so forth. It also means they've got the opportunity to, to expand some energy and, and in that way. Um, I'm not optimistic, but I think um, there is a chance that the Northumberland area can be quite industrial and can be quite successful in business. Uh, I think it's because we need to, instead of looking at what creates jobs in terms of the council and the state, and look at it's actually the entrepreneurs who create jobs and create wealth. And I think we need to uh, think about what attracts these entrepreneurs and we need to develop uh, an, an enterprise and culture in the North East. Well, with our reporters in the studio now, are you ready for some questions? Hello, Kieran, Kai and William. What did you enjoy the best and why did you enjoy it? Um, I think I enjoyed the um, opinions of all the different politicians, um, the way that they argued with each other and debated on different views and points. What sorts of issues came up during the debate? Well, the main issues was the Olympics, the regeneration of Northumberland and universities in Northumberland, and that was the main ones, just to bring tourists back and everything about the new project of Northumberland. Yeah. Do you think that MPs enjoyed it, and why do you think they enjoyed it? Yes, I do think the M MPs enjoyed it, because they had some tough questions to answer and the sixth form people were very good um, in in responding. One of, the, one of the issues that arose in question time was the lack of, lack of sport and leisure facilities in Benham. We sent our Roman reporters out to ask key sports and role models this question. Well, we've just recently done a, a community questionnaire which has gone to all the local schools, other organisations, general public. And the replies that's come back because we asked for suggestions for development. The main one, obviously, surprisingly, is for a sports centre. The whole effort was centred around Gallagher Park because it's central to the whole of Bedlintonshire. We're going to produce a list of short term objectives which will be things like seats picnic benches, but also keep a focus on longer term objectives, which will be uh, some sort of sports facility down there. We'd like to improve, especially around Gallagher Park, um, the facilities there for the number of kids that do actually play football there. And it would be nice to try and get a building put there with at least some changing room facilities and toilet facilities. The 
British Island Development Officer has stated that there is money available for development and uh, cycle facility in the northeast on the open day uh, last year. Uh, Kelvin Beatty, who was the national champion at the time, opened it. We had 200 children there taking part in the activities. And every week after that, there's youngsters using it informally to do BMX skills and events. Last academic year, we bust or we we transported across my region over six and a half thousand child bottoms on seats to competitive events at a cost of around £17,000 for transport and on top of that we incurred a further cost of around £8,000 purely to hire facilities because there is no facility in this area that we could get either cheaper or for free. There just aren't any facilities in Bedlington. I used to do basketball, rugby, running, but then I had to stop all of them because I used to captain the basketball team last year. But then like when I couldn't train anywhere outside of school, like I lost my skills so I had to stop playing. It's just like nowhere and like everyone even says just like stay in the house because there's nothing else to do and then my parents complain because they stay in the house. It's just like nothing really. I'm, not, I'm originally not from the North East, I'm from uh, West Yorkshire, which is a high league rugby league, um, you know, county. And the facilities there, the, the, the pitch everywhere you go, so I'm pretty surprised at that. I don't think that's uh, good at all, especially for young people like yourself who just want to, you know, play rugby or you know any sport really. Uh, if you don't got the facilities, and it's no good whatsoever. So it's absolutely essential that they have facilities where they can work and uh, and uh, and play, whether they are playing netball, basketball, football, whatever sport they're in. They need to have time with the ball. They need to have a. Uh, they need to get the skills that uh, internationally uh, some players have a, an advantage because of the weather. So it's very important that the facilities in uh, in this uh, area and region are the best that they can be. And I hope that uh, you're successful in, in getting uh, the facilities that you want uh, up to speed. I think it's extremely important. And I think, uh, yeah, just for the community as well, you know, somewhere where children can go and be together and, and work on, you know, team dynamics and spirit and especially keeps people out of trouble and things like that. And, um, yeah, I think it's a, a great thing if you can get more of it in and around your community. And if you uh, are successful in getting this sports facility, I'd like to offer my services to open it. I think that would be lovely. Coming up at the sports des desk, it's been a, a busy few weeks for our region sports team. We get a little result from around the grounds. We also bring you a special report from Newcastle United as we send our reporters to the training grounds to watch the players in action and grill magic past Alan Pardew and Pierre Mike Wilson. So also in also an insight into Newcastle Falcons' permissive status we had Kingston Park was this. We'll start with the Falcons, who are who are looking to survive in the Aviva Premiership this season. We sent our reporters to take a look around the Kingston Park ground and interview Falcons winger Ricky Sharif. We're here at Kingston Park, the home to Newcastle's Falcons. And we've just interviewed Ricky Sharif, the Falcons winger. Problems retaining their young players. Why do you think a lot of them see the goal? See the new bigger team. I've turned new to the game and I've just just come this year. And what I think it, I, I, what I think it has been in the past is because obviously, unfortunately, we've been near the bottom of the league and with relegation, uh, the better younger players move on to bigger and more stable clubs in the in a way of. Uh, you know, they're guaranteed to be in the Premiership. How do you balance like your personal and family life with like the games and your training and that? Yeah. My wife and my son have moved up here, so that makes it a lot easier. Because um, obviously, the only people I know up here is obviously my, my wife and my kid and uh, the lads. So, and 
what the people at the club in general and uh, it made me feel very welcome. When you were accepted in the team, you said the club for you? Yeah, really, no, what people might think, you know, about oh, what's he come over here, what's he come to this club for, what's he come for money, but blah, 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 and stuff like that. But the lads up here, uh, you know, they've been great with me because obviously you earn respect by doing it on the field or doing it on the training pitch. And, you know, I think I've uh, earned their respect and, you know, they're a good, good bunch of lads as well. Do you think? You think a coach is enough time to see you from our It's always sad to see a coach leave, but Gary's come in and he's he's really got the team together and there's a real good sort of team spirit, which is evident throughout the club at the moment, not just on the playing side, but within the commercial offices, the ticket office, everyone's, I suppose. How would you inspire more younger people to get involved with rugby? I think it's uh, not necessarily rugby, just the sport in general. If you can get inspired, it's you know it can come a hobby and it can come you know even bigger. You know, you're still young. Actually, it was my brother, uh, my younger brother, who went and played amateur rugby. I was a football, and I went along, watched him, and thought, oh, I want to play that. And then I've just been playing rugby since. Next we have our special report on Newcastle United, who has a good season so far under Mountain and Alan Pardew, sitting six in the Premier League table. Hello, I'm Robbie from St. Benedict's Cup High School. I am inside Newcastle United's training ground, and we are moments away from interviewing Alan Pardew and Mike Williamson. Really excited and just like, like glad to be interviewing them, interviewing them. <laughs> so yeah. And how did it feel? Can't wait till I get to that. I'm just so excited. I feel amazing. I just, I'm so excited to meet them. Why? Because they're like Newcastle and like they're better than Sunderland. So. You know. How are you doing? Good. Have you ever thought of being a manager for English? <laughs> uh, not, well, I have and I haven't. Um, it's a very, very difficult job, as you know, with the, with the press in England, and um, I think you have to be very, very experienced to take that job on. Uh, but sometime in the future would be really, really nice. Where do you see yourself in 10 years' time? In 10 years' time? I'll be 38. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> Hopefully, uh, well, hopefully still playing, to be honest with you. Um, I, you know, I try to look after myself and uh, with my diet and my training and things like that, yeah. Um, what do you think of the name change from Blimey, that's a difficult question. You're not meant to ask that. Get me in the papers, you will. Uh, we're trying to get some extra money for the football club uh, to bring in better players and keep the better players that we have. And... Uh, We've organised some contracts this week because we have extra finance coming in. So uh, it's important and unfortunately a necessary step that clubs have to take now. What's it like to see the I think uh, when you walk out, I mean, uh, Sunday, I just uh, walked into the stadium and I tried to absorb everything because it is. It's a feeling like no other for me, you know, dreaming of things like that and 52,000 fans and the passion that, you know, you guys have, it's, uh, it is unreal. What do you think of the What do you think? Good challenge. <laughs> You're a Sutherland fan. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> you had to get it out. You had to get it out, OK. Well, if it would have been my player, I would have been... Uh, 50-50 with that challenge because I think you would probably got sent off if we'd have been at Sunderland so I'd have been a bit concerned about that but I could see what he tried to do to change to try to upset us and you know he upset Tioti but fortunately for us Tioti uh, kept his head and, and stayed on the pitch which was great for us. <laughs> How do you feel after that interview and Alan Pardew and Mike Williamson? I feel it was a great honour and I was really Glad that I could do be a part of it. Um, it was just like amazing, like to meet them and talk to them and talk what 
the bulk of cooking so far. It, it was really good. I want to interview them again sometime in the future when I'm older. What did you think of today? Yeah! Northumberland is well known for bringing in visitors from all over the world, but do the people of this area believe tourism is that important to regenerate and employment opportunities? Northumberlandia in Kremlin is sitting openly on this day after a huge amount of money has been spent on building it. There are also attractions such as the famous couple in Newbiggin, which I've seen with them in recent years. We sent our reporters out to speak to the organisation behind Northumberlandia and to get the opinions of young people on tourism in Northumberland and what money could be best spent on. Hello, my name is Jared and I'm from St. Benedict's in Ashington. We have been looking at culture in Northumberland and how does it affect young people. One of the cultural landmarks we looked at was Northumberlander in Cramlington, one of the world's largest sculptures of a person. And we will find out if it's money well spent. Also, we will find out about the new, new big couple. What improvement do you think could be made on the couple and new big? Um, it could be a little bit nearer to the beach, so the sand, and it could be a bit brighter. It took a long time to build, and do you think it could be better in the time that they did that? Mm, not really, because it, it has attracted more tourists to never again, even if it took that long to build. It costs lots and lots of money to build Northumberlandia. What do you think it could have been spent on otherwise? It, um, I think it is a really good idea, but um, like we could have had a lot more statues if they were smaller. Um, I think it could have been spent on maybe like some different buildings or something instead of that, because that was quite big. I think it could have been and um, spent on like a war museum for Northumberland to attract more terrorism. terrorism. I, think it, I think it could have been there um, made to make more jobs. Hi Holly, thanks for talking about thanks for coming to talk about Greece with me. I got can you start by giving me some Microsoft to play? Yeah, it's a famous seventies film. It's a musical which means that loads of people know the songs from it. Um, and recently St. Benedict's Scopes High School took it and adapted it and put it on as a play on their stages. What did the show do well? Um, well, the lighting was very clear, which brightened up the stage, and the actors were full of energy and life, which uh, got the audience involved. So who shone during the performance? Danny and Rizzo. Rizzo especially, since um, an incident happened, yet she continued to do her acting. So were there any surprises along the way? Yes, the teachers got involved, especially Mr Reed. He was playing Team Angel. And also there was a live band made up of the teachers and the students there. And you've done a written piece? Yes, it'll be uh, put on the St Benedict's website very shortly. Thanks, Holly. Hi, I'm Irene and this is Anthony. We are going to tell you about the weather. Today's weather It'll be cloudy and some rain and maybe some sun. It is forecast to be uh, clear all week apart from tomorrow and Sunday, which is forecast to have heavy clouds and rain. In the northeast today, temperatures, temperature is approximately 11 degrees Celsius and cloudy patches of mist and fog are expected over the hills. Tonight, clear at first with some cloud cover and perhaps some drizzle. Then tomorrow it is expected to be the same.